um, with magnetism, right? Fleming's left hand rule is used to find direction of the force, right? This simple example here on the right hand side kind of gives us how the simple DC motor will work, right? So let's take a look at a simulation of how it works, and then I will um, and then I'll explain it and give you a, a proper write up on it, right? Um, let's take a look at a simple DC motor. Uh, Java Lab had a good one. All right, so watch this here. If you look here, we have a simple DC motor, right? A simple DC motor comprises of a magnet, right? This is one pole, right? Those are your magnetic poles there. You have the red and the blue. One is north and one is south, right? You have current carrying conductor. This here is your current carrying conductor, right? That's a current carrying conductor. And uh, you have your positive current coming here, negative on this side. Well, current flowing this way, right? Well, okay with that? Current goes from plus to minus. And here you have a very special feature called the commutator. And these rings are called the split rings. Okay? That's the split rings, right? If we were to place that turn on the circuit, what will happen is that rectangular coil will turn, right? We have to figure out the direction it will turn in, right? We have to figure out the direction it will turn in. So watch this here. I put in the current direction here. See that? And I put in the magnetic field direction. So let's do my favor and use Fleming's left hand rule and tell me what direction you think psi P e, B will move in and what direction. CD will move in. Use Fleming's left hand rule and see what direction you think AB will move in. AB is the one to the left there. Will, will it move up or down? Right, you have the magnetic field direction and you have the current direction, right? direction. Follow the green arrow, so magnetic field, and then current direction. Up all again. So the current going where? A to B, right? That's okay. Current going A to B. For sure, again up, again down. Watch it again. Magnetic field going from the red to the blue. Line up, line up that first, right? Line up that first, and then current going from A to B. So put, put, put your middle finger going A to B. So therefore the force on AB looking down. And then CD is what? Check out CD. CD is what? Up or down? Upwards, right? You'll see that? So it should move, uh, let's put in the force, and moving down on AB and up on CD. All again, that? Aria, you getting that? Keshav, check it back and see, right? So it's going down. So your middle finger should be pointing E to B. Right, your thumb pointing, should be pointing downwards at your first finger going red to blue. Right, watch what will happen now. The left AB going down and the top going up. So I'm going to let it run. See that there? It causes it to, it causes it to turn. That's okay. And that's the principle of the motor, right? The motor takes what type of energy? The motor takes electrical energy and gives you mechanical energy. Okay? Yeah, it takes TC, but it takes electrical energy and converts it into 
mechanical energy. Yeah, you okay with that? All right. So we need to be able to explain this and we need to have a nice short explanation on this, right? So head up the simple TC motto and see if we can draw that from now, please. See if we can draw that from Try it out. Right, so you want to be able to, to give an explanation on the picture. Right? Draw a little block to know who is in Mara. I draw it if you already. My simulation, I don't draw it on it working. All right, I'm gonna give you a different one. It might look this one might look easier. Right again, all, all you have to draw if you have in the oxygen exam, you draw a magnetic field, you draw a coil, you draw it next to the split rings. Yeah, I understand it. And these are your brushes. You, you enjoy it. And as a current, look how nice that is. Can I get better than that tonight? But not here. Huh? Yeah, ideally use the circuit symbols and you put it in. Right, but but to be honest, they don't ask you to draw it in an exam, right? They did it, they did not really ask you to draw it. All you have to do is to explain it. But it's for, it's for your note for like the hundredth time. And yeah, draw like it like two. I feel like I do this about five times a week. That's a good idea. The maps we shall to explain some parts of it. Right, so this is a simple DC motor. You need to remember that in the simple DC motor, it converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. Right, let's break down how to answer the, um, the actions of the motor, right? Ready? All 
All right, good. So let's let's take a look at this, right? Right. So how do we explain how do we explain the way the motor works, right? Watch us here. If you look at this example here, of course it is a simple DC motor. By the way, suppose they do not tell you that it's a motor. How will you know it's a motor? You're looking for split rings and one more thing. Power. Very good. Power supply. Very good, Keisha. So you're looking for power supply and you're looking for split range. Okay, shall I want to say it to online? Yeah? Right, Shabel. Good job too. Nice. Right. How do we explain the motto? See, see this here? To explain the motto, the first thing you do with a label diagram, you indicate current direction. You explain the forces acting using which rule? Fleming's left hand rule. Then you explain direction of rotation, and then you explain how continuous rotation is achieved. All right? So it's difficult, sometimes it's difficult to remember whole paragraph, but you can remember the point form. All right, so write this down. To explain, to explain the operation of the simple TC motor, To explain the operation of the simple TC motor, right? Use the following steps. Number one, number one. Oh, by the way, some diagrams, like in the older years, they didn't label it. You have to label it, right? A, B, C, D. Okay, but this one is labeled. So, step number one. Give the direction of current in the rectangle of coil. Step number one, give the direction of current in the rectangle of coil. Step number two, give the forces acting and the rules give the forces acting and the rule used and the rule used give the forces acting and the rule used Three, give the direction of rotation. Three, give the direction of rotation. Four, four not in this one, right? But four is important. Explain what happens. Four, explain what happens when the coil is vertical. Four, explain what happens when the coil is vertical. And five, state how continuous rotation is achieved. And five, state how continuous rotation is achieved. Good. In your own words, see if we can do that now. I'll give you five minutes. 
See if you can do that in your own words. See if you can answer one, two, three, four, five. Right? Go ahead. And then I'll ask somebody to do it. Most likely it'll be Jada. So in your own words, try to see if you could do that. Right, so take a few minutes and try to answer each step. Number one, direction and current, A, B, B, C, so on, right? Take your time and we'll be able to do all five minutes, right? All right, let's go, Jaden. Let's go, Jaden. First thing, what direction current flowing in? You doing what? I wait. None if I wait till half past six. I wait till. Yeah, I don't know wait on him. Yeah, what direction current going in? You see the positive terminal, right? You see the negative current flow somewhere, plus to minus, so net minus to plus. Right, so going from where to where? Shh, okay then, yeah. Where are going from? D to C or C to D? Huh? B to C or C, no, start from D. So it's going here, right? And? So it's going D to C, B to E, right? So it's going, Kind of hard. I don't know. Why is that clockwise? Anyway, right D to C, B to E. Right? So D to C. So the current is moving from D to C, B to E. That's okay? Right? So the current moving in a what? If you watch it, it's looking like anti-clockwise. Current moving in a kind of anti-clockwise. Right? So current is moving from D to C, B to E. Okay, nice. Next thing. What's the rule you're using? Okay, then follow the author. What's the rule you're using? Right, Fleming, right? Demand, the demand, the demand credit, right? Fleming's left hand rule. Right? So by using, next step, by using Fleming's left hand rule. 
right? GDM will tell us what direction the force is on DC. Tell them what direction is the force on DC and what's the direction of the force on BA. Yeah, GDM, I'm here. So by using Fleming's left-hand rule, the force on DC is where? Up or down? Up, you sure? I'm gonna see. So how you get it? Huh? I mean, I don't know how to do it. What do you mean? Show me my magnetic field direction. Show me my magnetic field direction, north to south. Right now, keep your fingers like this. Power the next two, you don't need these two. Right? You need this one. Right. Magnetic field, north to south. Current is where? D to C, right? So put your thumb in direction and put your middle finger in direction D to C. You gotta keep the magnetic field where it is. Same thing, treat your same thing. Right? Magnetic field, current going away. Right? So the force acting away. This is the same thing. Force acting away. Right? And do KB from fast Same magnetic field, current going away. Right, go ahead. Right, you strong. Huh? Right, yes. Yeah. So, Jaden, after a few years, he said that DC going upwards. A B going downwards. So that will cause it to turn how? Right, this going up and this going down. So it, it, it will turn clockwise, anti-clockwise. Yeah. So therefore it will turn anti-clockwise. Are you okay with that? So by using Fleming's left hand rule, DC experiences an upward, I call it notal pair, right? DC experiences an upward force, while AB experiences a downward force, causing it to turn in a anti-clockwise direction. Everybody okay with that? DC going upwards, AB going downwards causing it to turn in a clockwise direction, anti-clockwise direction. Causing it to turn in an anti-clockwise direction. Right, please remember that X is your split rings. And uh, this here is your carbon brushes, right? In case you have to label it. Right, now for number four. What happens when the coil is vertical? Anybody can help them? What happens when the coil is vertical? So when the coil like this. There's a problem when the coil is vertical. No current flowing, very good. But... What will happen? The motor will stop because of have a next word. Very good, Ranju. Right? Because of inertia. So because of inertia, a moving object continues. Now Newton's first law. Remember that guy? Newton? Yeah, he had three laws. So Newton's first law basically says that. Uh, the object will continue to move. So when it reaches the vertical position, it wouldn't stop. Inertia will pull it downwards. Okay? So make a note of that. When the coil is vertical, when the coil is vertical, no current flows, no current flows in it. No current flows in it. But because of inertia, 
but because of inertia, that's the inertia, I N E R T I E. Because of inertia, the coil moves to this position. The coil moves to this position. The coil moves to this position to the opposite side. To the opposite side. Full stop. How we explain in number five? How we explain in number five? Uh, why it continues to go in an anti-clockwise direction? Because I think about it. When the coil goes to the opposite side, would the magnetic field direction change? No, it's still north to south, right? Would the current be going anti-clockwise still? Yes. So if the current remains the same, current direction remains the same, and the magnetic field direction remains the same, then the force will remain the same and it will continue to move in a clockwise or anti-clockwise that direction, right? And what allows that is those split rings, right? So write this down. Because of the split rings, because of the split rings, being able to move because of the split rings being able to move with the rectangle of coil, with the rectangle of coil, because of the split rings being able to move with the rectangle of coil, it allows the current in this, it allows the current in the coil Type what one of the sun give it to you too. Keep forgetting to send a magnet hand out. That's the one hand I didn't send a magnet hand out. Right? It allows the current. Yeah. Think about, yeah, I think I send one. But it has one here. Right? It allows the current to flow in the same direction. It allows the current to flow in the same direction and by Fleming's left hand rule, the force is always the
Right, so that's the explanation of the motto. Any questions online? How long it turned out to be the five points in words? Let me list it out. Under the five points, when I gave you the thing, it's about five lines, six lines? How much? Seven lines, eight lines? Okay. Right, but of course, of course, one third of a page for good. All right, but of course, in exams, nothing wrong with just playing decimal. Nothing wrong with that. Right? Sorry, nothing wrong with playing point form. Right? Nothing wrong with putting um current current going from A to B. Right? Nothing wrong with just playing that step two, step three. Right? Because to be honest, our math schemes are in point form. Right? Our math schemes is not essay. So we're looking for current direction, A to B, one mark. Current direction, clockwise, next mark. Yeah, so that's basically it. So you see what they have there? You, you could go coin form, Fleming's left hand rule, one mark. Force going upwards, next mark, right? That's all, you want to write a nice long essay. Point form is enough, yeah? If I have... No, that's some way you have now more apparatus. You have one, obviously, I'll help you. And she's got right up like, like apparatus they could choose on.
All right, sorry about that if you tell you. So I was a bit online. I was I was calling out something and you asked me to um let me start over. The next thing that we're looking at is starting over, right? Is uh electromagnetic induction. Right? Electromagnetic induction is the generation. So you could write this down. Is it generation of electrical energy? Is it generation of electrical energy? From magnetic and mechanical energy. From magnetic and mechanical energy. Right, so basically we're looking at this. Right, so we still have the magnet, right? The magnet will apply the mechanical energy, but here's what we're doing, right? We have the same principle. We have a coil in here, but this coil is not connected to any current, right? This coil, we are going to apply a force there. So we are going to apply a downward force here, and we're going to apply an upward force here, right? So we're going to apply a force. And by applying a force on a conductor in a magnetic field, we are going to generate current. Are you okay with that? Huh? No. no, no, right? So we're taking a look at that generation of that um, current, right? And the rule that we're going to use, the rule that we're going to use is Fleming's right hand rule, right? Not in grip rule, the right hand rule. So it was near right hand now, right? Same meaning, same meaning, right? Force, magnetic field, current. That's okay? This is your force, right? But I want to be a little specific. So the rule that we're going to use is Fleming's right hand rule, right? The name of the rule is Fleming's right hand rule. Right, I want to be a little specific. This is applied force. This is the applied force. This is the magnetic field. And of course, this here is the induced current. So we're trying to find this. So we're trying to find the induced current. Right, I'll show you the little simulation just now. Right, but basically, once you once you apply that force in, into this magnetic field, you are going to generate a current. Right? And you use Fleming's right hand rule. We also call Fleming's right hand rule generator rule. Which is called left hand rule. Fleming's left hand rule. If the Fleming right hand is generator, what you will call the left hand rule. Huh? The motor. You come up from my nice. The motor rule. Good job, Samira. Huh? I don't know. He said it first. He said it first and louder. Right? I think the man a little something, the man get it right. And he reached a little bit class today, you know? He reached a class early. He wasn't lying, I'm gonna bench talk with anybody on the phone. All right, so that is your induced current there. Right, now let's apply. All right, let's see if we can apply Fleming's right hand rule. That's okay. Which hand are you using, Elena? Left hand, very good. Very good. Right, so as I said, cool. All right, so watch this here. So let's try an example. Example number one, watch this here, right? We have north here and we have south here, 
right? We have a conductor, but the conductor has no current in it. We don't know if it's plus, sorry, we don't know if it's X or dot. We have to figure that out. But we know the force is downwards, right? So we're using Fleming's right-hand rule to determine if that's a dot or X. Try it. Use your right hand. Remember, you're just moving around and you can move your page, but leave your hand like this all the time, right? Don't try to um, shift it around and end up with this, right? Yes. So you have to tell that current going in or current coming out. In, some people saying in. Uh, she can shoot what online, sir? Online, what you all think? Out or in? Online, out or in? I see an in online, I see an out. I see an out again. So let's see. Were you all set? In or out? Yeah. In? Or you said children? In? Right, by the way, in is what? Dot to X. In is what? Dot to X. Okay. X, right? In is X, out is dot. Right, so let's see. So I'm using Fleming's right hand rule. All right? There's the right hand, right? Trying to figure out the direction of current, right? So the force is down. But the current is not the south. Y'all say not? Current is not not the south. Sorry, magnetic. The magnetic field is not the south. So the magnetic field going this way. And the forces, the forces downwards. So therefore, my middle finger pointing out of the page, out of the whiteboard. So the answer is dot. Very, very bad. So the answer is out. All right? Let me see who get out online. Some people get out. I Posad get right. Elizabeth, Vikash, good job. Copy it down. Huh? Do what? Huh? No, you're in too much. It's <laughs> Try this here. Try this here. North South. Try this here, please. Yeah, <laughs> 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 
Yeah, you're using the rule. Out of come. Oh, yeah, cool. yeah. Yeah. What you guys have out? Huh? In or out? In Vishal. Celine Where you got? In? Right hand. Go ahead. So, current first. I mean, now, uh, right at the field first. So, going down, north to south. Nice. And it forces towards me. So, your so thumb is what? Right. Force towards me, down to your thumb is what? In all. In. So, where would you X. Right, so the answer is in. Y'all seen it? No, you're not seeing it? Magnetic field going down, the forces towards me. So therefore, the middle finger is in what? Here is the left hand. Very good. Next one is yours. Uh, two more and that's it, and then we take a look at it. Right, I want you to look at the generator for both, right? How to explain it. Two more, are we done? No, no, not done in class. I've done with this part right now. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I get excited here. Yeah. All right, number three, number four. Number three is Elena. Number four is uh, um, Salim. But even like how it was, I created it in a time of it was 55 words. The model. Wow. Okay. You model? No, I know it was 50 or 55. I am on the model. Huh? Oh, we have 50. No, it's Okay. Right, message in all quick. Right, so the last thing that we have to do in, in magnets, we have to take a look at the generator. Uh, and we have to take a look at, what's the guy's name? Faraday and Lenz's law. Right, and then transformers. Yeah, everywhere. Man, everywhere, boy. Right, so I want to show you those laws and then we can take a look at my uh, the generator. Hello. Yes, come in now. Take a reach here. I'm good. Who's number four again? Oh, Celine. Thank you, this is Celine after. Come fast, come fast, I want to go on. 
You can read it. Just show me the rule, right? So you're using the right hand, right? North, south, right, good. So X or done. Correct. Salim, I'm fast. Keep on any job now, I'm Yours? Where is Shamari at first? Wait, right. oh, why the thing that's so good? Right. Sure, but you force this way, but I think it is upward. But I think it is up. This had to go down, this had to go this way, and this had to point up. Oh, it's not this so you have your north and south, right? Yeah. And you have four. Yeah. I see it's had a kind of twist around. But on your on your paper, you can move this paper around. Right? Right? Good job, Elizabeth. Both of them in. Good job, Jada and again. All right. Try and remember that for next week, right? Okay. The last thing that we have to do is Faraday's law and Lenz's law. All right. Let's see if we can look at this simulation here and these laws and be done. Your homework, I want you to read up on the generator. Right? Because we have to explain the generator next week. Um, let's take a look at this simulation here. Oh, what did I say? Right? Yeah. You shall relax yourself, my please. <laughs> All right, so watch here. Somebody outside? All right, so let's take a look at this simulation here on Faraday's law, right? Right, so let's take a look at this simulation here. <laughs> Right, so, so let's take a look at how uh, Faraday law looks, right? Wait, I can't do it. All right, so watch here. So here's what Faraday said. Um, what you see here, watch the magnetic field lines around the magnet. You all see that? Is there any electrical energy in that circuit there? Nothing, right? So the bulb not lighting. What is here? When I take... Six. Okay. Right? So what you see here? As you move the magnet oh. in and out. See what happened there? Huh? So what you see here? As you move the magnet in and out, you will see that the bulb lighting up. Right? Yeah, it's a little loud. Right? So and if <laughs> Right? So here's what Faraday said. All right? So Faraday said when the conductor cuts the felines, an EMF is produced. 
Ah, okay, well, right. I will try to listen now. Watch here. So here's what Parody said. Parody said that you see all those felines. When those felines are being cut by the conductor, an EMF or a voltage is being produced. Right. So so watch it here. As I move it in, you see you see cutting. I'll come back out. But watch when I do it faster. Look at how much electrical energy watch. All right. Right. I don't know what it happened so far, huh? So Faraday said that the faster you move it in and out, the greater is the EMF. Watch this here. I'm going to do it slow. Look at the voltage value. And it faster. Right? See how large the value is? We shall see how large the value is. All right. Last thing on you. Last thing. I want you to, to notice when it's going inwards, the voltage is neg negative, right? And when it's coming out, it's positive. Right? And I will explain this law in a little more depth next week. It's called Lenz's law. Actually, I can do it now. Or no? Right? So Lenz's law basically says that the direction of the induced EMF always opposes motion. I'll explain that more in depth next week. But watch it closely, right? One more time. When the not going in, it's negative. When the not coming out, it's positive. Watch when I flip it over. Watch this here. I'll explain. Sorry? Only negative. Right? Well, I'll, I'll show you that next week. That's, that's lenses, though. That there's a reason for that. And the reason for that, Vishal, is that it wants to oppose the motion. Right? It wants to oppose the motion, so you have to apply more mechanical energy. So watch it again. What do you think will happen when I'm pushing this out? The voltmeter reading is what? Let's see. I want to pull it out. Negative. So the reason, the reason for that is that um, there's always a pose in motion, right? And the guy who explained that is Lenz's law, all right? So what I will do is I'll give you a Faraday's law and Lenz's law next day, and I'll give you a small note on generator, all right? So your homework, read up on the generator. Actually, write, write your own note on generator, okay? That's your homework. Write a note on generator. All right. Uh, so that's it. Next day, we'll do Lenz's law, Faraday's law, and the generator and transformer. All right? So that's it.